what do you think is happening in the league office today based on what we saw at the end of Monday Night Football last night with Tony Carrenti calling Cassius Marsh for taunting by staring down the Steelers bench outside the yeah, numbers? Well, they're, they're reviewing. I know if I were there, I, I would have had a conversation with Tony last night. I wouldn't have waited till today. I would want to get his perspective on what happened. Certainly that call on Marsh, you know, what did you see? Why did you call taunting? And then, and then ask, Hey, what happened there? It looked like you bumped him. Did you lose your balance? It's, I mean, it's hard for me to sit here and say that I would imagine any world where Tony Crenny would do that intentionally, but you watch the video and you go, man, what the heck happened? So, you know, they're looking at all of it. They're reviewing the game like they normally do. And, and I would imagine they've had conversations with Tony and the rest of the crew just to kind of figure out what, you know, their perspective of it. Well, I mean, so um, you knowing what this emphasis is this year and your ear to the ground knowing what's going on in the NFL – do you think the league wants that flag in that instance against that action by the player last night? I, I, I don't. I, here's the thing. There, there's, there's two ways to look at this. There's what the approach was, and I think the league, the, the, the competition committee, the coaches subcommittee, which works with the competition committee, they, they, they saw a, a decline in sportsmanship. They saw this in-your-face stuff. The, the standing over the ball carrier after the tackle, the getting in somebody's face, they saw that not being called. So they wanted to clean that up. And that's good, and we've seen that before. But it feels like we've gone another step to where even listening to Tony in the pool report, he said he was posturing. Well, you know, if he didn't say anything and he's just kind of staring at the bench, I mean, that's a, that's a Pandora's box now. I can, I can, I get the in-your-face stuff. I get the standing over. Look at me. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna. That's gonna lead to other things, um, altercations later in the game. You want to nip that in the bud. But this, again, I wasn't there. I don't know what was said or what Tony was seeing from his perspective. It just feels like a, another level, and I'm not sure that is what the committee intended no i mean we i guess we could all assume what he saw which is what the rest of us saw which is we saw a player you know start walking towards a bench not his own um strutting and he maybe did not see the fact that marsh said nothing he might have assumed yeah. marsh was saying something and barking he had no idea it was just a stare because he's only seeing marsh's back as he's walking even inching closer to a bench that he used to belong to, by the way. Uh, I don't know if sure. officials know history of every single player out on the field, but uh, he had no idea if he was barking at him. But isn't there any sense of moment and contextualizing that needs to happen here, Dean? 3.30 yeah. to go in a game, whole country watching, that's now a three-point game. You, have, you, you, you know what the score is and what time it is. Why? Throw the flag on that, man. Why? Yeah, and 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 look, Tony's a veteran referee. He's been right. around a long time, and and he has good judgment. He he's been a good referee for a long time, and you do hope that in that moment, look, a foul's a foul, and if it's there, you got to call it, regardless of two minutes to go in the fourth quarter or the opening kickoff. But that moment, it felt like I would have wanted to see more. Look, if Marsh gets up and he's in the Steelers bench area and he's jawing and he's up in somebody's face. That's a foul. You can't do that. But to be kind of near midfield and just staring, it just felt like he could have given him a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt. And and then you get on top of that, then you get the flag and the bump, and it's just all – it's just tough to kind of explain the whole deal. It's 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 a tough one. Dean Blandino, Dean Blandino here on the Rich Eisen Show. And the thing that I think that outrages fans the most is not just because there's no context in the call, right? There, there, there is, you know, a player that's performing this uh, stare and strut, but there's also no context, as I just said, about 3.30 to go, forces a punt, I'm going to call this penalty, I know it's a fresh set of downs, I could essentially end this game right now by doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's one thing that outrages fans. But the thing that's the most outrageous is the concept of lack of accountability. That, that, that you, hear, you hear coaches basically say, and Matt Nagy said last night, guys have to know there's an emphasis. Guys have to know that they shouldn't even give uh, an official uh, a, a thought in their head to twitch sure. towards their flag. 
How about the official not twitching towards their flag? How about something in their head to say, I'm not going to do it because it's not worthy of the foul at the moment? How about that? Dean. Yeah, there's no question. And, and officials are held accountable. I think it happens more behind the scenes. Correct. It's not out in the open. It's not public. So I think that how so have a hard time. Explain, to, fi- it's, explain yeah, to, it's, to folks. There's an evaluation system. That game, any game, you're going to get graded on every call you make. You're going to get graded on calls you should have made. You're going to get graded on your mechanics, your positioning. So there's former officials that go through each game and they evaluate the performance on a lot of different levels. And then you get, so for me, if I'm looking at that play, I think it's what does the league do with this going forward? Do they say, good call, Tony, that's correct. We're going to put that on a training tape for every official to see that that's taunting, and we're going to, we're going to reinforce that, that call, and you're going to see more of that. Or are you going to take the approach, look, that's not, you made the call, it's not a good call, we're going to give you a downgrade, we're going to put it out to the officials to say, we do not want this call, we want to see more. Here's some examples of what we feel are taunting. I mean, that would be the approach that I would hope happens. Um, but they are held accountable. And if you don't grade out well, you don't get a postseason assignment. And if you don't grade out well, um, you are at risk of, of losing your employment with the NFL and officials get let go every, every off season. So there is a, an accountability. It's a profession that is under intense scrutiny. Yes. You know, I can't think of other professions where – we're talking about it, right? You know, you, we make decisions. You're an accountant. You make a decision. You might have made a mistake. You go home. We're not talking about it on the Rich Eisen show. But it is something that fans want. They want to know that they're held accountable. I guarantee you they are. But, again, what is the league going to do with this? Are they going to say that's a good call and we want to see that going forward? Or are we going to say, hey, wait a minute, that's not what we intended and, uh, and we don't want to see calls like that going forward. Well, Dean, uh, you didn't hear Arrow 1. We called out a CPA and Rancho uh, Mirage uh, earlier to say that they screwed up somebody's taxes. Yeah. Well, it was, yeah, it was an said, awful— that guy, yeah. Fan, that fans, guy are, fans are still calling in. But, but in all seriousness, though, you're, you, I, I totally understand the scrutiny, but there is an issue with the fans right now, certainly on this subject alone when it comes to officiating. There's a credibility issue. This is definitely a PR scenario what about doing what the nba does put out a last five minute report based on what we saw last night so everybody knows was tony carrenti downgraded for calling this taunting penalty on cassius marsh or does the league say yes we want that called i think it's important that fans know that the league does or does not want that called we sat there we saw it it's a big game it's week nine it's a difference between potentially a team being four and five and three and six and five and three or 500 it's really that big why not let it be known yeah i mean the nba i think there's pros and cons i think some of that it comes from a good place i don't know if that's worked out you know you've heard like lebron james and others kind of be critical of the two-minute report I get it. I think there would be some value. I don't know if I worry, you know, because if you get all these reports and you're seeing, hey, those officials made eight mistakes in the last two minutes, that undermines their credibility as well. I think there's ways to do it. There's ways to communicate with the fans, whether it's social media or having somebody from officiating come out and say, hey, let's look at the play. Here's what happened. Here's what the officials saw. We don't think this is a foul. We don't want this going forward. I think we, there needs to be more of that. They didn't have that early in the season. You didn't hear anything from officiating. I think they've started to head down that path a little bit, whether it's their, their Twitter account or other things that they're doing. But I think that is important because fans, they, they need to know that. I don't think you give them everything, because right. you just, you, but you give them something right. to say, yes, we're looking at this. We understand there's an issue, and here's what we're doing to address it. So last one for you on this. Uh, if you were still the head of officiating, I'm making you, just for the split moment, the head of NFL officiating once again, even though you started yeah. this interview saying you're glad you're not. <laughs> would you have downgraded Tony Carrenti for this or said good call? What would you have said? No, I, I don't think it's a good call. I don't, you know, I'd want to hear from his perspective like we always did, but, right. but I would I would want to put that out to our to our crews that look, guys, this is not, we want to see more in the bench area. We want to see him in somebody's face um, to call this. And, and that, that would be my approach. 
Um, you know, and whether there would be something beyond that in terms of communicating that to the public, certainly to the clubs, you know, to, to Chicago and Pittsburgh, you would you would do that. That's normal protocol. But I, I, I just don't think there's enough there to call taunting. I, and I don't care. I don't care if it's the first quarter, you know, with 13 minutes to go. I don't think that is what the, the committee intended with this point of emphasis. Yes, do you think that is happening today? Um, to be honest your with best you, guess. I don't know. What's your I best guess? I don't know. My my best guess mm-hmm. is they are going to bend over backward to try to support that call. And I think you do that in some instances because you want to support your officials, but there are times where you just can't. Um, and my gut would tell me that I don't know if there's going to be some public proclamation that this was a good call, but my gut would tell me that they would support that call. Mm. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.